to politics, and we have some big breaking news. Republicans and Democrats agree on something. The so-called Safe Justice Act. It's meant to address the explosion of federal inmates over the past 30 years, many of them low-level drug offenders. In this new bill that, did we mention, has bipartisan support, really want to underscore that point, uh, aims to fix the prison problem through a three-step program, and it begins with overcrowding. We have two of the co-sponsors, Democratic Bobby Scott and Republican Doug Collins and also Jessica Jackson Sloan, who's pushing for its passage at a grassroots level through Dream Corps, where she is national director. We're so glad to have all of you with us today. So glad to be here. Good to be here. Thank Congressman you Scott, help us understand how this bill would help to reduce the prison population to start with. Well, one of the things we looked at is our overcriminalization task force is the fact that we lock up so many people in America, many of them low-level nonviolent offenders, that recent studies have said that we're adding to crime. We're messing up so many families. We're wasting so much money. We've got so many people with felony records. We're adding to crime. And what this does is takes a comprehensive, evidence-based approach to crime policy, where we make sure the, one of the main factors is we make sure the punishment fits the crime. And by taking a comprehensive, evidence-based approach and getting away from the slogans and sound bites, uh, we found a number of initiatives that have been studied and uh, done in states, so we know we've got uh, state-based experience that will reduce crime and save money. And that's why you've been able to get so much support. Congressman Collins, as Crystal was saying, it's not often you have lawmakers from the opposite side of the political spectrum coming together, especially today, to try to make something happen here. When it comes to prison reform, talk to us about why this is something you're so passionate about, and is it something you believe enough of your Republican colleagues can also support to actually make some inroads here? Well, I do believe it's something that we can get support on, not just uh, in, in a bi very bipartisan fashion. Uh, my ex experience as a pastor and as a chaplain, I I've seen the power of grace. I've seen what can happen when lives that have uh, made mistakes, when you find and you provide a way for them to find rebuilding and redemption. And I think what we have found too many times is that simply many times we have punished those instead of providing a way uh, to restore them. And I think that's one of the things that we're dealing here. In the state of Georgia, we've done this in a, a very conservative state where we found that when we provide alternative courts, when we provide uh, ways out so that they can rebuild lives, find their families, do those kind of things that make productive citizens, we in all in turn are safer in uh, our societies and our communities. And it's just something I'm very passionate about. I certainly hear you on that, Congressman Collins. And I, I think most people, when they look at the prison system, are more interested in whether it's working not a uh, strictly left-right perspective on what we're doing, but are we rehabilitating people? Are we making our community safer? Jessica, we want to go to you. Uh, we've covered these issues a lot on the cycle, and we've covered them on a policy level and the grassroots. You looking at the organizing side, it seems that there has been a real shift in public opinion on this. Why do you think that is, and, and what are you guys doing? Well, to that point, the ACLU just did a survey of likely voters that showed us that public opinion, the vast majority of likely voters, have really shifted and are open to some criminal justice reform. Uh, on the federal level, we've seen that the prison rate has increased 800 percent in incarcerated individuals in the last 40 years. And I think that both the public and the legislators are starting to realize that this is not a sustainable system. And instead, we need to start utilizing uh, policies that are going to keep our streets safer, lower the cost of the prison system, and lead to people who are incarcerated being able to give back to their communities in a meaningful way once they re-enter society. It's really incredibly refreshing to see this emerging bipartisan consensus. Jessica Jackson, Congressman Collins, Congressman Scott, thank you all so much. Thank you.